So I heard you need a date for tonight. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, Margo like looks up like what? I like turn to Rody and Tony and I'm like, these guys are looking for some company. And I am totally using my new move, many bodies. When you promise one of your gang members to someone, add two to your role to turn them on. So you want to turn you want to turn Ellen on first and then pull strings, even though you already have the string. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I will tell you what's flashing through Ellen's mind is you and your gang being absolute <laughs> shit heels to me, but uh, do it, yeah. Like, are you, so, yeah, this is interesting. Yeah, roll, roll, turn someone on. Like, <laughs> and it kind of makes sense because this is like a level of like weird attention that Ellen has kind of always wanted, but now that she's getting it, it's like uh... freaking out. <laughs> a seven, eight, ten. You got that string, and then you have to choose a reaction from the list there, Ellen. Probably the moment when the fake food that she has eaten so far. <laughs> <laughs> throws out on the table wet sandwich oh, Margo, I'm so sorry <laughs> hits in Margot's lunch right in you know all of it you know the last Oreo and stuff and I just stand so up and I do that thing where I stand up because it's probably the tables with the chairs and I, the chair goes back and I'm trying to find a way to run out of the room because I'm gonna spend the string spend the string yeah I will totally spend the string for you to notice how hot my boys are <laughs> and pre presumably agree to go with them to yule ball right? yes exactly <laughs> and you get you get an xp for taking that offer ellen oh, tony's pretty bearable <laughs> <laughs> tony's probably the hottest guy in the damn school <laughs> this is tough because she is freaking out xp it's not nothing but oh, that advances you too so yeah well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pull Margo. Margo, I just want to check on <laughs> yeah. you. What are you thinking? How are you feeling right now? So Margo, first of all, she's like, just shoves her tray away from her going, what the? And then she looks up at Jonah and the boys came with you, right, Jonah? I'm like, shouldn't you guys just like going out in the woods and stripping down and doing your mud thing? What's with all of a sudden this interest in Ellen and stuff? And I think when you say that mud thing, you notice Jonah, like, look down and start feeling his belly in a weird way. Can we back up? W what you just said, like, what's with the sudden interest in Ellen? Is that a shutdown on Ellen? Like, were you inadvertently insulting uh, I, Ellen? Well, I wasn't intending to shut down Ellen. I was more shut down on, on them interacting oh. with Ellen. Might yeah. be both. Yeah, that could be taken <laughs> a very negative way. Yeah, I mean, because to me, it kind of read like why are you suddenly interested in Ellen as if like, yeah. well, that's what I'm wondering. Like Ellen, would you hear it that way? Possibly. Oh, God, yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. An inadvertent shutdown then on Ellen. That's a six. Six. With a minus uh, one on Cole. Unless you spend a string. Mm, do I, I don't, I'm have no strings. Or, or mm. use a condition, right? Petty is the right condition to hit me mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Because I think I go, yeah, I'll go with Tony. A big, a big middle finger, that's good, I like it. Choose one from the list below, do you guys do conditions? I'm going to give you the condition of you're a fool. What's the condition that you give Margo, Ellen? I'm gonna give Margo protective. Does that sound reasonable? Like she see me walk into the lion's den here? Yeah, she actually kind of feels bad for Ellen. She's seen plenty yeah. of outsiders. Yeah. She's been an outsider. So yeah, that'll work. That's a super easy condition for me to push to. So. Good. So yeah, mark your XP, Ellen. It sounds like you're going with Tony. What happens right after this is Jonah walks over to Sarah with Rhodey. Uh, oh, and dude. he's like, oh, Sarah, I heard things were going kind of shaky with your plans. And I was wondering if it, you might like the idea better of going with Rhodey. You know, he doesn't have anyone for tonight. Do you have a string on Sarah? <laughs> Do I? Let's see. 
No, but I will so just try to, try to get one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you present Rody to make him seem optimally attractive here? I'll also let you tap Lilith's condition for a bonus if you kind of work that in a little bit because Lilith is like a, you know. Lilith oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, Lilith doesn't seem like she's really. Yeah. I'm like, Lilith's not really in a good headspace. It doesn't seem. I don't know. Oh, God. Yeah. I only got a five. <laughs> bonuses, though, right? I mean... That is the total. I oh, got the total is five. Oh. I got snake eyes. <laughs> <laughs> she looks at Rody and she's like, well, and she kind of like pulls you to the side a little bit, Jonah, and she's like, Jonah, if I'm being honest, uh, yeah, I feel like things are a little weird with, with Lilith. I think she wanted something that maybe I don't want. I mean, no, you know, it's like, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I, I was kind of wondering if you have a date for Eagle Ball. <laughs> Poor Rody. <laughs> <laughs> Jonah is like, no, I, I don't have a date. Um, do you, do you want to go with me to Yule Ball? God, Jonah, this is me, Sarah, asking you if you want to go to Yule Ball. And oh, I think this is one of my darkest self kicks in. I think I look Sarah dead in the eyes and, and I'm like, you're not good enough for me. You're garbage. Should be grateful that I even threw Rhodey at you. Should be grateful. Lilith even cared about you. You're nothing. Oh, You're just some some white trash girl pretending to be something more. Everybody's so harsh right now. This is a uh, harsh group. And that's with cold. Oh man, that's a ten. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'll tell you if she has any strings on you. Uh, she does not. She has no strings on anybody. I will gain a string on her. And I'll immediately spend it to make her go with Brody. Oh, okay. <laughs> roll, uh, well, so you have to tempt them. And I think I have to tell you like what it would take to give me the fiction. Like how do you like, you've totally like the game to her or MRA to her or whatever. Like how do you, <laughs> I think, I think what I do is I look to Rody and like head tilt towards her. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, this is your chance to shine and be like a hero. Yeah. Oh, 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 I see. Good, Rody. <laughs> like, he's like, "Come on, Jonah." He's like, "Don't pull that red pill bullshit on Sarah." <laughs> like, he kind of like, kind of pushes you away a little bit, you know. He's like, "Sarah, look, ignore him. He's a fucking asshole. It'll be fun, right? I mean, I clean up okay, and I'm not a bad looking guy, right? I mean, it's just one night." Sarah will say, "Yeah, all right, yeah, all right. We're almost at the drop dead hour anyway, so sure." <laughs> my big question is is lilith around right now? well that's the thing yeah when does lilith <laughs> enter the scene that's what we need to know that's the that's the that's the simmering tension here lilith do you arrive at lunch at some point it would be funny if somebody snapchatted me that i'm sure i'm sure it was ben um, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah you see it you see sarah like you know, kind of like agreeing to go to the dance with Rody. You just had like, we're going to do the, I think maybe like you and Genevieve are looking at it and she's like, looks like you're without a date. Yeah. And I think Lilith tells Genevieve that these last few months have been hell without you all. So maybe what you guys should be doing is sticking close to me from now on. Kevin brings up a good note in the text of, did she promise to go with you? We can say she did to you, and therefore she's broken the promise. You thought you guys were going. You guys had a yeah. contract for a very... <laughs> yeah, it does seem viewpoint. like it does seem like it is from my point of view most of the time. Like, yeah, yeah. You went yeah. that way. Right, yeah, yeah. Like you interpret things as a contract that maybe other people don't, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you want to have that vengeance power on Sarah, that could make the Yule Ball very fun. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I think that sounds great, Ed Blood. And uh, I think Lilith says, you know, stick close to me from now on. And then I think the promise is, Genevieve, you should you should go with me. I think the reason why it's a promise is because Lilith assumes that 
the Fae don't really like being out in the human world, considering mm -hmm. she hasn't yeah. seen them for like two and a half months or, or whatever it right, is. Yeah, yeah. So she's just like extracting the, the promise uh, to keep Genevieve a little bit uh, closer to the hip than before. Yeah, yeah, she'll take that promise. And she knows what it means, right? She's very... Uh, how does the string exchange work? Who gets what? If she refuses, then I take two strings on her. Otherwise, um, it's just, yeah, she'll just she'll a go. promise. Yeah, yeah. She's like, yeah. yeah, let's do it. Yule Ball, that's pretty funny. We should talk about the pagan origins of various Christian practices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's like, I, I was I like there. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of her telling me this stuff as we walk. I think that all of a sudden in the lunchroom, Jonah like makes like a scene kind of out of not being okay. And he like runs out and goes to the uh, locker room. And I think maybe you like see him run by. Okay. Uh, on the way to go after Jonah, I want to stop by the class and on the chalkboard and big bold words, she writes, if someone does not want me, it is not the end of the world. But if I do not want me, the world is nothing but endings. And it's how she uh, clears her condition. And then she goes after Jonah. I think Genevieve will see Jonah too. And she's like, oh, I recognize that guy. He and his buddies are, uh, well, let's just say they're, they're regular destination television uh, for some of us over in the, uh, we're in the Fae realm. They do some like, pretty freaky shit. <laughs> That's saying something, considering what we got up to. <laughs> the the fans are like, respect. <laughs> uh, yeah. She's like, so when people go into the forest, do you, do you like watch them? She's like, oh, yeah. We see all kinds of crazy shit. All kinds of crazy shit. She like cocks her head and she's like, that actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> One part of the forest we can't see very well. A troubling part but we don't talk about that much so. well should i should i know anything about jonah do y'all mm -hmm. have any dirt <laughs> uh, what kind of dirt do you want she kind of leans up against the locker like this is an interesting proposition i've always had a sense that jonah keeps a little bit of something from me especially since when we crossed over jonah was just disappeared right and then at the time she sort of like blushes a little bit i kind of lost track of him when we were doing what we were doing, but... She says, I'll tell you this. That time when you first entered our realm with him, yeah, he went to that place that we can't see very well. I don't know what he got up to, but I'd be careful with that one, Lilith. I feel like before I met you guys, I was in the darkness, and if Jonah's there now, maybe I could bring him back too. Margo, you can frame up your scene if you want. So really, just like that, you're going to go? I mean, Tony's an okay guy and everything, but... Ben walks up to the two of you and says, Hey, so I was led to believe that the two of you were going to be talking about Yule Ball. Yeah, yeah, uh, Ben, Ben. Um, mm, I, I, hmm. Oh, maybe Ellen wants to tell Ellen, I just want you to know that I, I'm i really, really excited to go to Yule Ball with you. Oh, oh, well, that's cool, because I'm going with uh, Tony, and uh, I don't think Joan has a date, so maybe you should go ask him. <laughs> Shut down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a seven. Okay. Well, first of all, what are you choosing? I'll gain a string on him. Okay. And he's going to give you the condition needs help. He says, it's cool, Ellen. It's fine. I, I, I get it. I just want you to know, Ellen, that if things don't go great tonight at Yule Ball, if you need anyone to talk to, I'll be there. I'll be around. And he just kind of like slinks away. I look at Margot, daring her to say it, to say what is what she's thinking about herself and what Margot clearly is. Classy, Ellen. That was really classy. 
You're just going to roll with Jonah's gang. You know what those guys are like. I hope you feel good about yourself. I got to go throw this stuff away. And I stand up with my lunch tray and just walk off. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, so, Margo, once you go to, like, where will you go once you go to throw your food away? I think I'll just go find Austin and we'll go smoke a bowl for the balance of the lunch period and just solidify plans for the Yule Ball tonight. Good. That's good. Let's cut over to Lilith and Jonah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how does this go, Lilith? Where are you again, Jonah? Where did you run to? The showers? Uh, I or ran to the, to, to the showers in the locker room, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think Lilith comes in and finds you and says, like, do you want to tell me why you're upset? He's, like, sitting in the showers. And I think when he looks up at you, you see, like, his stomach. You see it, like rots and you you see like plants inside of him and then it like heals back up again and i think and that's it, probably like, gaze into the abyss for someone yeah right? yeah i think i would like both of us maybe that'd be kind of cool i never that. i just want to know what you both are trying to find out or what you would want to know so her primary thrust at this scene is going to be kind of figuring out what happened to jonah because for her it's kind of a great shame right like for her that moment where she got taken in like we both approached the the group and they took her in and it was like this powerful experience that changed her forever meanwhile you were kept out right yeah yeah, yeah. like he, thomas i remember you started watching us do this thing thomas put his hand on you and was like this isn't for you you're coming over yeah. here because you're like a nasty boy basically right yeah and so yeah she's gonna try to figure out what's going on with you and do what she said and try to pull you out of this darkness essentially with, with Tom. Go ahead and roll. What about you? Yeah, I think Jonah wants to know how he can get justice with Thomas for fucking with his life so much. What's that justice look like, I guess? Like try to serve justice to Thomas, basically. Right, yeah. Good. I got a mid result. I got a really low result. Your mid result. I will show you confusing and alarming visions, but you get your answer nonetheless. You're going to basically see what happened after at that moment, like when you were making out with your brothers and sisters and Jonah was taken away, but or at least went into this like unseeable place. You're going to see the place, right? You're going to see Jonah being led away by Thomas. You're going to be see Jonah be this is not exactly how it happened in, in the game, but like basically you're going to see him be led into this like this dark fake grove, right? And you're going to immediately sense the danger of it and this sort of like ancient hostility between Thomas and your people, right? That's all going to become super clear to you. And you know that like Jonah is a minion of Thomas in some way, that Jonah is thralled to Thomas in some way. Basically, what you have is just like this fear. Is Genevieve, did she go with you or is Genevieve, did Genevieve peace out? Um, I think she peaced out probably. Okay, all right. You're just going to see basically visions of like those those goblins in the metal mesh bodysuits just ravaging and uh, tearing apart and murdering your, your court. Just a, a stroke of bloody violence. And that will probably unnerve you a little bit. Yeah. I should say so. Is that, are you, do you want me to do, keep my cool? Yeah, I might do keep, let's do keep your cool. What are you afraid will happen once you see this? I think I'm afraid that Thomas is going to know that I'm trying to remove Jonah from that power right now. Nine, eight, mid result again. <laughs> <laughs> let's just go with that. Like he'll know if you, if you continue trying to like reach Jonah. Yeah. And I'm, uh, depending on what, happens with Jonah's thing, I'm going to try to comfort him and also some healing for him, maybe, by doing so. Meanwhile, you had a miss, right, Jonah? Yeah, I did. <laughs> a big one. <laughs> You're going to learn something about, like, justice and retribution vis-a-vis -vis Thomas, but not exactly how to get it on Thomas. Right. You have a first-person vision of yourself in Thomas's throne room, his lair, wherever he is. And he's sitting on his throne half naked. He just has a loincloth and basically nothing else. 
And he's got his driftwood crown on his head. And you, or at least from your perspective, you are begging for your life. Like you are desperately begging for your life. Thomas is so angry right now and he's going to crush you and you're on your hands and knees just begging and he is not hearing you and you just continue to to be so obsequious and submissive to him right you you kiss his hand you kiss his knee you kiss his feet and he finally decides to give you a chance to save yourself and says you're going to be going to the Yule Ball in my place. And you look now and you realize that your own hands are not your hands, right? They're someone else's hands. And that's what you see. That's awful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> After seeing all those visions, Lilith is pretty overwhelmed and she's going to defy Thomas anyway, especially she feels very responsible for your condition, uh, Jonah, because yeah, she basically abandoned you to this asshole <laughs> and things have been unraveling since. And she, and then we also know that now that Thomas is, has acted against her own fae kind as well. So I think she's going to approach you and be like, Oh, Oh, Jonah. And like put her hand on your stomach and try to like quiet you and she's like i've i can see what's happened to you and never go near that man again he is not good for you and i think you know that you don't have to keep punishing yourself by doing all these all these terrible things you're a good person i can feel that and her hand is like on your chest too right like what you perceive as being the nasty stuff that is bad and regrowing she shows you that it's okay by putting her hand there and it doesn't like repulse her or anything she's accepting you even with all of this perceived damage to your body she's like i'm not going to ever abandon you again but you have to promise me that you'll never go to thomas again are you also yeah, doing I, a healing here with erotic subtext that's what i was going for yeah <laughs> i'm getting that yeah <laughs> I do have three harms, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, you can knock two of them off with her magical, <laughs> tender, erotic subtext fate. Type. Does that trigger sex moves? Uh, it's more, it seems more caring. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah. She wants to show you, essentially, that there is erotic subtext, but also that there is a kind of intimacy that comes along with sex that doesn't have to be like this toxic masculine subjugation within it right like that you always seem to go with and that she saw with you and thomas so like there's a whole different kind of intimacy that you haven't really experienced yet and she could be that for you without it being sexual but it's still being a powerful experience for you right i think that happens is there a string being spent here are you spending strings i don't have one on jonah but i don't know if the subtext would turn him on or not or or what well how do you feel about it, jonah yeah I don't think Jonah feels turned on. I think you, maybe you do get a string on Jonah just because I feel like you saw a part of him that is like freaky as fuck. I think that's fair. Um, yeah. I think that Jonah, having just experienced his own vision and you trying to make him feel like it's not a big deal, he's mad. <laughs> he like looks to you and he's like looking in your eyes. And then I think you see like his face kind of rotting away antlers start poking and growing out of his forehead and then it's like as his like skin rots away you see like the stag mask hello listeners we hope you're enjoying monster hearts memories of mercy falls as it turns out there are a number of costs associated with producing pocket size play including various hosting fees, online services like Dropbox, and editing. You can help defray those costs by supporting the gauntlet on Patreon. A $2 pledge goes a long way toward keeping the lights on at Pocket Size Play. And you won't just be supporting the show. You'll also get exclusive early access to each new Pocket Size Play series in its entirety that we produce. So head over to patreon.com forward slash gauntlet and support this show today.
Thanks.